This case involves the effect of employment contracts executed abroad upon rights constitutionally guaranteed to employees. SRL International Manpower Agency v. Yarza Jr. SRL International Manpower Agency, or SRL, hosted a job opening for its principal, Aquila Company Limited, UAE, or AI Salmin Trading, or Aquila, for a certain project in Qatar. Pedro sent an application to Aquila through SRL. In July 2010, SRL received word from Aquila that the latter was interested in hiring Pedro as project manager. Afterwards, SRL forwarded Pedro's documents to Aquila for the processing of his employment visa. Aquila soon furnished Pedro an offer of employment for a two-year engagement but without the approval of the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration or the POEA. Aquila and Pedro directly contacted each other and the latter was uh, able to depart for the United Arab Emirates on October 14, 2010 using a visit visa instead of an employment visa. On March 24, 2011, Aquila asked Pedro to return to the Philippines with an instruction for him to apply for deployment anew under an employment visa and with the condition that he should return 10 days after its processing. In April 2011, Pedro returned to the Philippines and started processing his next deployment under a new contract of employment with the assistance of SRL. Pedro underwent a medical examination with SRL's accredited clinic, the CMED Medical Clinic or CMED, to assess his fitness for work. However, CMED found that Pedro had uncontrolled diabetes mellitus type 2 and declared him unfit for work. This finding was reflected in a medical certificate dated May 10, 2011. SRL disclosed such finding to Aquila and informed the latter that if it was still interested, it should send a waiver indicating its willingness to hire Pedro notwithstanding his unfitness for work. Aquila replied that it had a strict qualification not to hire an applicant who is not fit for work. Subsequently, in a letter dated May 22, 2011, Aquila informed Pedro that he could not be hired due to medical reasons. The Supreme Court here resolved three issues. First, was the offer of employment furnished by Aquila to Pedro valid? Second, did an employer-employee relationship exist between Aquila and Pedro? Third, was Pedro illegally dismissed from employment? On the first issue, the Supreme Court stated that uh, since employment contracts of overseas Filipino workers are perfected in the Philippines and following the principle of Lex Locha Contractus or the law of the place where the contract is made, such contracts are governed primarily by the Labor Code of the Philippines and its implementing rules and regulations. The court added that the laws generally apply even to employment contracts of overseas Filipino workers since the Constitution explicitly provides that the state shall afford full protection to labor, whether local or overseas. Thus, even if a Filipino is employed abroad, he or she is entitled to security of tenure among other constitutional rights. The right to security of tenure remains even if employees, particularly overseas Filipino workers, work in a different jurisdiction. Furthermore, the court also stated that under the Labor Code of the Philippines, employers hiring overseas Filipino workers may only do so through entities authorized by the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. The court continued that unless the employment contract of an overseas Filipino worker is processed through the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, the same does not bind the concerned overseas Filipino worker. Because if the contract is not reviewed by the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, certainly the state has no means of determining the suitability of foreign laws to our overseas Filipino workers. In the present case, the court found that the offer of employment was perfected when Pedro agreed to the same while he was still in the Philippines. However, the court found that the offer of employment ran contrary to the Constitution and the law and was not approved by the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration. 
Specifically, the court found that the offer of employment, although stating that the rules and regulations found in UAE's labor laws should apply, the same contained stipulations contrary to the policies of the Philippines concerning labor contracts and security of tenure. With these findings, the court declared the offer of employment invalid. With regard to the second issue, the court ruled that an employer-employee relationship existed between Aquila and Pedro. Notwithstanding the invalidity of the offer of employment, the court ruled that an employer-employee relationship existed between Aquila and Pedro. According to the court, absent a valid employment contract, the following elements of the fourfold test should be considered. Selection and engagement of the employee, payment of wages, power of dismissal, and the employer's power to control the employee's conduct. The court reiterated that the most important element is the employer's control over the employee's conduct, not only as to the result of the work to be done, but also as to the means and methods to accomplish it. However, the power of control refers merely to the existence of the power and not to the actual exercise thereof. No particular form of evidence is required to prove the existence of an employer-employee relationship. Any competent and relevant evidence to prove the relationship may be admitted. However, a finding that such relationship exists must still rest on some substantial evidence. In the present case, the court found, for the first element, Aquila selected and engaged the services of Pedro precisely because he was deployed through a visit visa under Aquila's instruction and endorsement. For the second element, Aquila did not deny that it paid Pedro's wages with the offer of employment as reference. Regarding the third element, Aquila had the power to dismiss Pedro. In fact, it did so when it uh, issued the termination letter dated uh, May 22, 2011. Lastly, on the fourth element, the court found that Aquila had control over Pedro's work conduct, which included the means and methods he would employ to produce the results required by the company. In addition, the court took into consideration the fact that Aquila did not show proof that it took no part in directing Pedro's job output. In particular, Aquila did not appeal the finding of employer-employee relationship before the Court of Appeals. Hence, the court bound Aquila by such conclusion. As regards the third issue, the court declared that Pedro was illegally dismissed from employment. With the existence of the employer-employee relationship, the court ruled that Aquila should accord Pedro due process, both substantial and procedural, before terminating his employment. The court stated that to comply with substantive due process, Pedro can only be dismissed for a just or authorized cause, the absence of which would render his dismissal illegal. In the present case, it was found that Aquila dismissed uh, the services of Pedro on the ground of disease under Article 299 of the Labor Code of the Philippines. The said provision essentially provides that an employer would be authorized to terminate the services of an employee found to be suffering from any disease if the employee's continued employment is prohibited by law or is prejudicial to his health or to the health of his fellow employees. The court further stated that to be considered valid, the dismissal on the ground of disease must satisfy two requisites. 1. The employee suffers from a disease which cannot be cured within six months and his or her continued employment is prohibited by law or prejudicial to his or her health or to the health of his or her co-employees. And 2. A certification to that effect must be issued by a competent public health authority. In the present case, record showed Aquila's decision to inform Pedro that he could not be hired due to medical reasons. However, the court found that Aquila failed to present any certification from a competent public health authority, citing that Pedro's disease could not be cured within six months or that his employment was prejudicial to his health or that of his co-employees. Said the court, absent this certification, Aquila failed to comply with Article 299 of the Labor Code of the Philippines as well as applicable regulations. For the court, Pedro's dismissal was not based on a valid cause. Furthermore, the court found that Aquila did not accord Pedro procedural due process. Record showed that Aquila unilaterally dismissed him by simply issuing a letter dated May 22, 2011. Additionally, Aquila sent this termination letter after it already issued a new contract of employment dated April 15, 2011 to him. 
clearly said the court. Aquila, after discovering that Pedro was deemed unfit for work due to diabetes, sought to immediately sever ties with him. The court accordingly ruled that Pedro was illegally dismissed from employment. On the relief granted, the court stated that uh, even with the invalid offer of employment, the existence of an employer-employee relationship between Aquila and Pedro, as well as the illegality of his dismissal, entitled him to claim for the payment of his salaries for the unexpired portion of his contract. In this regard, the court also found it proper to award moral and exemplary damages under prevailing jurisprudence, which allows the migrant worker to claim such damages in connection with the employment contract or as provided by law. Moreover, the court awarded Pedro attorney's fees at the rate of 10% under Article 2208 of the Civil Code of the Philippines. The court stressed that the liability of Aquila and the uh, SRL here was solidary under Section 10 of the Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos Act of 1995 as amended.